And welcome back to our second episode here of the Moon to Sun Weekly Forecast with Thomas Miller, Jenny Geyer here. And we're going to take a look at this busy week ahead as the sun moves into Gemini. We've got a busy one ahead, don't we, Jenny? Yes, we do. And it's beautiful, lovely, lucky energy. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, you talk about luck. Let's take a look at this real quick. Just show people what it's looking like even on Sunday, kind of for the weekend. Talked about this Friday on Fun Astrology. But boy, here's the stack. So this is right before the sun is coming up on Sunday. And now Sunday, Jupiter resumes that position of last planet up in the horizon before the sunrise. But this is what you're talking about with that luck. I mean, voila. And I had a friend here from where this development where I'm living. Um, she went to a casino up here last week, pulled a slot machine, Jenny, $4,000. Oh my God. First pull. Fantastic. <laughs> so you can't make this stuff up like we say, right? I don't well, want everyone to think that they're going to win $4,000. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> you know, we're not setting that expectation here, <laughs> but <laughs> somebody did do it. All right. So here's the sun in Gemini. Now let's, uh, what, what kind of things do you have your eye on? I mean, the sun moving into Gemini is kicking off this big season. It's a big Gemini season. That's just going to grow and grow and grow as we have more planets following. Um, but the sun moving there is really going to light up a part of your chart that has to do with uh, communication, new connections, learning and processing uh, your surroundings. And it's going to actually form a trine uh, just in a couple of days with Pluto and this is going to bring in some transformational energy, but because it's Gemini, it has to do with our native surroundings. So the things that we see every day, this is not about, you know, traveling far and beyond like Sagittarius, you know, into new lands. This is like what you see on your day to day is going to suddenly look different to you. You know, there's going to be a transformational shift in how you see your every day. And it's going to be a positive shift, I think, because you're going to start to notice that there are certain things and certain um things that you do and invest in that are either really uh, worthy of your energy and time and effort and other things may fall to the side because they are not so interesting to you anymore suddenly. Uh, so follow those things that are really making themselves apparent to you that are interesting, that make you feel in flow, that um, skills or activities that you engage in that really make you feel uh, powerful. Do you think that we're going to have more clarity and more direction now with things moving into Gemini. And here's the context of how I'm asking that. I've been feeling it myself to a degree of, whoa, what has happened here that I felt like, and it could be the move and the thing with my family and everything that's happened that's been told in, in the other podcasts. But I've also talked to other people who are saying exactly the same thing. They've been feeling this, and whether it's from the solar energy last week and the previous weekend or what's going on, but do you think now that we are moving back into an air sign that we're going to get some more clarity? Absolutely. In fact, you're kind of jumping the gun on me because this has a lot to do with the tarot card <laughs> that I picked for today um, about that kind of sense of direction Ooh. and feeling like we have momentum in moving towards something that we have our eye on in the distance. So yeah. And you're not going to make me wait. <laughs> of course I am. You have to wait till the end, like everybody else. <laughs> I got Sun, Mars, Sun, Mars, Neptune conjunction. I can, and Scorpio. I, I, don't wait right well. here. Okay, I get it. <laughs> we all have to learn patience. <laughs> okay. All right. So what else about, uh, about Gemini season now that we're in? Well, it? we're going to talk more about Gemini as we talk uh, later on in the week as more planets start moving into it. But let's go ahead and start uh, or jump into Wednesday because that's the next big um, okay. aspect that I just mentioned before, which is the sun in Gemini trining Pluto. Um, and this is energy because it's Pluto and it's a slow moving planet that we're going to feel probably most of the week. And we might even start feeling it as early as Monday. Um, and this is going to lend a kind of a, a weight or gravitas to our mental energy. So there may be serious conversations that come up, or maybe you just might have, you know, when you're driving your car to work and something just comes up deep in your subconscious. And maybe you woke up from a dream and you had just like some craziness happening. You know, these things might um 
feel very dense, feel heavy, and it's good to let them play out as they will journal or have, you know, a conver have a conversation if it needs to happen, let it happen because whatever is coming up, it's Pluto and it wants to be seen. It wants to be heard and it needs to be released. So whatever you do, don't try to stuff it back down because it will not help. Um, and this is part of the overall evolution that we've been experiencing, especially since this, you know, big, Jupiter Uranus conjunction is really trying to shake us up. Uh, things that were buried underground uh, are coming to the surface and we have to now deal with them and figure out where they belong and where they don't belong. Uh, it is a trine. So that is favorable. So at least we have the stars on our side, right? Yeah, For absolutely. a positive transformation. The other thing that I'm thinking about here and just looking at this is Jupiter is just nipping on the heels. I mean, it's pressing on that trine and Venus right behind that. I mean, the good luck continues. <laughs> it's like this whole oh, yeah. thing. Of, this is uh, just a little it, taste. We're going we're gonna to get more of this. Uh, so, you know, when pay attention to what comes through really this week because we're going to get more and more of it, uh, again, as we move into Gemini season with more planets coming through uh, and trining Pluto and Aquarius. I think the way Kristen put it on the podcast Friday is, is to lean into your luck. You know, that's a, well, I think that's great advice all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but right now, I mean, folks, you are looking at one of the most powerful luck configurations that you could construct in the chart. All now right. for this next one, Jenny, you know, we've got a time honored tradition that you have to join oh, me in. God, no, don't make me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not now. ready for that. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Three, two, everybody join in. Come on, everybody now, no matter where you are, we're going to howl at the moon. It is the full moon on Thursday. We Best do this all the time now. on Sun Astrology. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> that is your tradition <laughs> and one I very much appreciate. <laughs> we'll get you there. We'll get you there. It might take a month or two, but we'll get you there. All right. <laughs> Full moon Thursday. Yes. So this is, I'm particularly excited about this one. I have a sun in Sagittarius. actually have a full stellium in Sagittarius. So I have a big Jupiter energy in my chart. I love a full moon in Sagittarius. To me, that just sounds like a lot of fun, but it's also a big day because we have this beautiful Venus conjoining Jupiter in Taurus, exactly sextiling Neptune and Pisces. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's okay, because it's going to feel awesome. And in my notes here, I wanted to share this specifically, because this is the first thing that came to my mind when I was thinking about how to talk about this aspect, and how to really convey like just how beautiful and auspicious it is. And I described it as a Disney movie princess falling for the prince with a full musical number energy. And that's exactly oh, wow. what it is. Say that so. again. <laughs> Disney movie princess falling for the prince with a full musical number energy. That's what it is. It's wow. like, yeah. I mean, I was actually just watching The Little Mermaid the other day because I'm a child at heart and I love that movie. And uh, <laughs> I was just thinking of the scene when they're on the boat and Sebastian and the whole choir sings and when they're kissing on the boat. Anyway, that's the energy that we should expect from this uh, aspect. And uh, especially with it being lit up with a full moon in Sagittarius, which is Jupiter's sign and Jupiter in a very happy place right there next to Venus, getting this beautiful flowing support from Neptune and Pisces. This is a very, uh, this is like true love, you know, kind of aspect. This is very uh, special. And so I, I really would love to hear uh, whatever comes through for people. If they would uh, drop a line somewhere in the Facebook group or even just email or something, I would love to hear what happens for people because I know this is going to be somebody's falling in love. Somebody's getting proposed to. You know, it also to me has a wonderful spiritual connotation to it too. Absolutely. Yes. Because Sagittarius being a spiritual sign, Jupiter, spiritual planet, Neptune, the connection to the home office. I mean, if you don't get fogged up from Neptune or you don't fog your own self up, that's your doing. There is a wide open channel here of great communication. Yeah. So don't fog it up. Don't fog it up. Yeah, there you go. There's the other F word that we can put in there, right? Don't fog it up. <laughs> I mean, it's, a great, it's a great day to, to go enjoy some live music, be outdoors, you know, go have a picnic if the weather's okay, or if not, you know, go to the movies with a good friend or your lover or whoever, but just make sure there's, you know, outdoor activities, I think are very, very uh, important or special, especially with there's, uh, with there, when there's a lot of Jupiter energy, a lot of uh, Sagittarius energy. Outdoors you know, really when we sure. think about the full moon too, as being that point of releasing, 
I'm wondering about the releasing around this because so much is at 29 Taurus fixed mm-hmm. earth sign and moving into air. It, it is like almost this connotation of releasing any st- fixed, right? Any prying your fingers off of those things that don't serve you. You mentioned that. You mentioned it a couple of times in ways even already that we're prying our fingers off of that. Well, just release it. Just let it go. Here's your day to do it. Yes. And actually, like I said um, at the beginning, this is really kind of the moment where the, the sprout from the seedling breaks through the soil, right? You know, you've done all you can. You've been watering. You've you know, you know, fertilized the, the land. And now you're seeing the fruits of your labor come through. And I think that's also part of this energy, which is you know always very encouraging to see. I still want to see this tarot card. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay. <laughs> you got me chomping now with this. I mean, my goodness. I'm like, what in the world are you holding back from us here? Okay. Where are we going next? All right. So then we also have Venus coming into Gemini uh, that same day later on. Uh, so she's going to join up with the sun and uh, that's more of that Gemini energy. So, and it's, it's bringing kind of a, well, of course, Venus, there's there's relationships, there's finance, there's beauty. And this is all coming into a very the mental uh, energy of Gemini. So uh, new ideas, things that make you feel beautiful, things that make your surroundings feel more beautiful, anything you can do um, that that is artistic in any way, if you're um, interested in music, uh, playing an instrument, any kind, anything that has to do with uh, anything that's mentally stimulating, but is also beautiful, graceful, and uh, feels good. You know, Venus just likes to feel good. Mm. You know, this, I love that where this takes place here, and now this is set to California time, but it's in the ninth house. And that's the spiritual house, if you will, as well. So here's this repeating theme of this spirituality around this whole day. It's just beautiful. Wow. Oh, wow. that's from your location that's going to be happening in the ninth house? Yeah. Well, that is nice. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, big fan of the ninth house over here. So, um, and also, you know, it's good to notice when any any time a planet moves into a new sign, to note where the ruler of that sign is. And right now, as we mentioned before, last or the week before last, I forget which week we're on now. Um, we're recording this ahead, uh, but Mercury moved into Taurus, and that is Venus's domain. So Mercury is in Venus's domain, while Venus is in Mercury's domain of Gemini. And while Mercury is in Taurus, he's really, you know, taking the time to smell the roses. And so, and so should you. So, so should us all. Um, so yeah, this is another kind of signifier of like taking the time to really appreciate the fruits of your labors. Things are coming through for you, and now it's time to really kind of take a little bit of a rest, a little bit of a respite, and appreciate those things that are coming through for you now. So here we are, just a couple of hours past that full moon, and I'm just seeing my eyes are are going to this influence of Pluto, and Pluto is not barking at this thing. It's favorable. This is a trine, and it's in the sextile to Neptune. And then so is this big stack in a sextile to Neptune. And look, I mean, even the part of fortune right there. So, I mean, there is just so much material benefit, material and spiritual benefit to this whole thing. It's just, you know, they're always tied hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot have one without the other really. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The chart speaks as much about the physical reality as the spiritual reality. In fact, more so. As above, so below. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, everyone, please enjoy and please let us know what happens. Because uh, I'm actually kind of curious to know what's going to happen for me. And I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is great. <laughs> what a setup, too. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. Okay. So the only other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, at the end of the week is Saturday. And this is not an aspect. Uh, it's just something that I'm making note of because I've already made such a big deal out of it in other uh, conversations that we've had. And this is when Mars moves to the 19 degrees Aries point where we had the solar eclipse back in April. Um, and this is a big deal because Chiron was very prominent in that eclipse because it was at the exact degree point of the sun during the eclipse. 
Um, and if you're not very really familiar with Chiron, please go back and listen to my uh, my rants, <laughs> if you will, uh, if you want to learn more about that, because it's really beautiful. And um, because Mars is moving to that degree point, it's kind of a, a revitalization, a, re, uh, a revisiting of that same energy. And it's a very beautiful healing energy. And now Mars being there, you might think, oh, God. Um, but no, uh, Mars is at home in Aries. So this is good. This is this is an empowering aspect. This is an aspect that um, makes you feel more empowered and having a sense of maybe kind of invincibility. It's something that you will feel coming through. It won't be anything that necessarily happens to you or anything that you notice in your environment. It will feel, it'll just feel different. You might just wake up and just feel like I can do anything. You know, I'm going to go fix my own toilet, that kind of thing. You know, not because you have to, you can always call the plumber, but sometimes it just feels good to be able to know that you can do it yourself if you need to. And that's the, that's the kind of can do it energy that I love about Aries and with Chiron there. He's really about um, that kind of lasting feeling of empowerment. And so if that comes through for you at some in some way on Saturday, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. That's, you know, I was just noticing here and we could go back mm -hmm. on our days that you mentioning this there, I think, is about the midpoint. So Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday is like the midpoint with Mars between the North Node from that conjunction uh, over last week and then mm -hmm. Chiron that is some super powerful I mean all this stuff that's been influencing Aries with Mars right in the middle of it applying to Chiron mm -hmm. um, I've been feeling Chiron a lot lately Jenny I have in several different areas in my own life so this is going to be a strong week for that as well Yes. And if you can um, tune into Chiron, you know, really get get uh, quiet in yourself to be able to hear his message. It's really beautiful and and very, very beneficial. Um, and again, because the North Node is also there and we had that conjunction with Mars uh, last Sunday, it is, uh, again, kind of reiterating the same notion of where you're headed, uh, whatever direction you're headed in. Is, given, is, is being given fuel, you know, and that fuel is coming from within. You are noticing your power. And so when you notice your own power, the world responds, people notice it too. And people are attracted to power and strength. And when you recognize it in yourself, other people start to recognize it too, and new opportunities open to you. And suddenly, you know, the road is cleared for whatever that purpose, that mission is that you are, are so determined to, to accomplish. You know, that that's the theme of this transit of the North Node through Aries is stand up for yourself. Put your own mask on first. You know, those kinds of themes. Yes. Stand your ground, plant your feet, take your voice, all of the above. If you don't believe in you, then who will? You know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And now with Mars moving toward Chiron, it almost makes me think like you could go to war with that wound <laughs> you know, it's like in a way to say um like i've been uh reflecting on one thing that i've had a problem with here since some medication that i take for my heart has put weight on that i don't want well it got to a i just was like the other day dang it i'm going to really do something about this if i have to starve for the next month i'm going to starve but this is I'm dealing with this medicine or not. I'll stop taking the crazy medicine, whatever it's going to take here. That's the kind of thing that I'm almost thinking with our wound is we could say enough is enough. I am really moving into this toward resolving. Yeah. And, and when you really you know, approach problems with that kind of determination, chances are you're going to find some way to solve it for yourself. And that's very empowering to know that you can fix something on your own and for yourself. It's taking your power back. Exactly. Not um, giving in to that wound. That's right. And but also knowing that knowing how to tend to that wound is power in itself. You know, being your own healer, that is very empowering. I can't imagine anything more empowering than that. Not having to, to not having to go outside for the help or assistance, but being able to tend to it and find a solution that works for you and helps you. And that podcast that she was referring to of where she went on her quote unquote rant about Chiron was, I think, three weeks back during Fun Astrology. And it was right there in the middle of the week where Jenny is featured. So if you just go to the 
fun astrology podcast and search Jenny's name, you'll find it there. Uh, would be a really good one to go back and listen to those points as well. Good job. Yeah, good, Thank great you. points. Um, and then so finally, we we have uh, Jupiter coming in to Gemini later on in the week, Saturday as well. Um, so now we have Jupiter, Venus, and the Sun all in Gemini. And Jupiter won't make his trine to Pluto until June. So we will wait to talk about that. But for now, this is just really an amplification of that Gemini energy. Again, expanding our minds, new ways of thinking and seeing our everyday reality. Um, and because it's Jupiter and he's uh, more used to uh, the expansive kind of um, broad view that he gets in Pisces or in Sagittarius where he's at home, um, being in Gemini is a little bit less comfortable. So this can sometimes be felt as being overstimulated mentally or can be overwhelming for some people. This is true for me. I have a strong Jupiter and I also have a Mercury in Sagittarius where he's also um, same kind of problem happens where Mercury is trying to take on the bird's eye view when he's trying to figure out, you know, the Excel spreadsheet in front of him. Um, so this can be a, a feeling of overwhelm can happen for some people, but this is why it's really good to start relying on uh, grounding techniques, whatever uh, you have been working through and working on to give yourself that kind of uh, grounding ability uh, throughout Taurus season, use that, you know, really start to um, get used to incorporating that into your everyday practice if you haven't already, uh, so that it becomes muscle memory, becomes in, you know something that's integrated to the point where you don't even have to think about it anymore. So if you start feeling like you're overwhelmed or anxious, um, you know, don't even think I'm feeling overwhelmed and anxious. I should start doing a breathing exercise. Just start doing it. You know, just start the breathing exercise right then and there and nip it in the bud. And, you know, same kind of thing. If, if you have a, uh, an exercise regimen that you use to kind of uh, move energy through your body, do that. When you start to feel overwhelmed, go take a walk or change the scenery, however you need to do to feel embodied and kind of uh, work through that mental stimulation, you know, in a, in a grounding way. I'd like to just do this real quick. Here's how we begin the week. There's Sunday. Everything is in Taurus. <laughs> there's Monday, and and it is early in the morning, but there's Monday. The sun moves in, and then, like you said, then Venus moves in, and then by the end of the week, Jupiter moves in, and there is your moon to sun week <laughs> all happening at zero degrees Gemini. Wow, incredible, with a full moon in there and all those luck planets stacked on top of each other. I can't even fathom the the power of this week. It's amazing. It's going to feel very different by the end of the week than it did from the beginning. Look no. at it. Boom. Yeah, it absolutely is. All taking place just over the next five days, six days. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. And we haven't even talked about Venus trining Pluto. <laughs> Can we see the card now? <laughs> you want me to say anything about Venus trining Pluto and Aquarius? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, it really is going to be a reiteration again of what's already been coming through as the planets move into Gemini. Uh, we've already seen now the sun made its uh, trying to, to Pluto. And with Venus, it's just going to add a little bit of a, a different flavor to that kind of weightiness, that that depth. So again, that, that sense of Pluto lending his gravitas to whatever it is that we're working on and whatever we're building in our relationships as well. So again, be prepared for some maybe heavy conversations, but ones that are ultimately very productive and constructive and supportive for this uh, this evolutionary path that we're all on together. Um, ultimately, it will be a supportive um, uh, interaction, whatever it is for you. Um, and it's a reminder, you know, Venus training Pluto is is really a reminder that all the resources that we need to uh to accomplish what we want to accomplish will be made available to us when we need them so just make sure to uh trust in the process and keep the faith all right awesome great 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 now can we see the card can we see the card can we see the card, right. <laughs> see the card? Sure just lined up right okay so the card <laughs> that i pulled for today or this week is the chariot and the chariot is actually a card that I, I spend a lot of time thinking about this card and I don't know how well you can see it, but it's a guy and a chariot and he's got two sphinxes leading him. 
And to me, um, this card is really rich with symbolism. It's one of the major arcana cards. It's the seventh major arcana card. And to me, it's about um, when you let your higher self take the lead uh, so that when you get really quiet and you become really um, in tune with your body, because the, the cherry is really symbolic of the mind and body in unity. So that heart mind connection is lined up. And when you have that, that, uh, that energy lined up just right, you don't even have to think about where you're going. You know that you're being led that ultimately you are not the one in control. Really. You can only be in control of your own vehicle, you know, your mind and body that's in your control. But the universe has plans and we really have to see those plans through. We are the vehicle through which the universe is, is speaking and making its plans unfold. And those are the two sphinxes represent. So, you know, they aren't horses. They're not moving. It's not about you moving anything. We are not ones moving. The universe is in motion. Everything's in motion and we are just being guided. And that's what the chariot represents. It's just being, letting yourself be guided by that inner voice, that that beautiful, wise voice that exists inside of all of us. If you can get quiet enough to listen to it, it will it will guide you when you need to be guided and tell you where you need to go. Just keep your eye on the prize, you know, whatever that is for you. Man, what a perfect cherry on top of the whipped cream on top of the Sunday of a beautiful week. <laughs> yeah. Just incredible. That's great. Love it. Wow, Jenny, this was great. What a walkthrough. Really appreciate it. We got through it. <laughs> we sure did. And we will see you guys next week for the look ahead. Enjoy this week. As you've seen, it's going to be incredible. Yes. Thank you, Thomas. This is great.